Okay, if you take Judea and then you were to go up Syria and then you, you go clear over to Greece, Macedonia, and in between you've got Turkey. Well, there was the seven churches that God talked, uh, talked to, Jesus talked to them in the book of Revelations, uh, chapter 2 and 3 there. And so, let's see, now Colossae was over there by Laodicea. And then Ephesus is about 100 miles over east from them. But Laodicea was next to them. Laodicea is very rich, and uh, they were known for their ISAV. And uh, we'll, we'll get into what Jesus said to uh, some of those, actually, maybe at the end if we have time. And uh, I noticed that uh, Paul mentions, I think he mentions Laodicea like five times in the book of Coloss Colossians. Uh, so what else can we say? Oh, okay. Now, they were being troubled with some heresies in Colossae. Now, they had Greek, okay, you had Jews. Basically, you break it down to Jews and Gentiles. Everybody that wasn't Jew is Gentile. And who were uh, running the whole world area around there had been the Greeks. And then it switched over to the Romans. Uh, so they were under the Roman Empire at their time, but they had the philosophers, the Greek philosophers. So you had these philosophies that were coming into this, well, it was like a sect of Judaism, uh, they would call it. It was the Christians. They were called Christians first at Antioch, but they were following Jesus as the Christ because the Old Testament, these prophets were speaking of the Christ, the Messiah that was coming in, the one that they would have their hope on. So anyway, you've got these, um, well, even Jesus, think about this. Jesus was telling the Jews, yeah, the traditions of man nullify the power of God because the Jews, they already had tons of uh, uh, traditions that was coming in. Of course, the, the Jews, you've got the written, which is here, which we have, the Old Testament. And then you've got um, the, the, the ones that were passed down by word, uh, oral traditions. And then they wrote those traditions down and continued with them for uh, many, many years later. Here it's 2,000 years later. They got the Talmud and they've got the Zohar and the Kabbalah, Jewish mysticisms. So you have these things that are coming in to take the church off of Christ, to get people shipwrecked and off in the ditch where there is no salvation at all, but people can be head over you and they can have their own little kingdom and their own power. Uh, and what they're trying to do is supersede who God sent, the Christ, the Messiah, Jesus. And you had the same thing coming from the Greeks with these, uh, oh, these higher mind cults, the philosophies that they were speaking. And so, yeah, those philosophies will take you nowhere. And then another, another thing they had was with those philosophies were uh, angels that they would put between man and God. Well, there's nobody between you and God except Jesus Christ. And Coloss Colossians really makes this sure. So let's see. Uh, those New Testament books, remember, if you think of the first five history books, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which are Gospels, and then uh, Acts, written by Luke. Um, uh, okay, then we have uh, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and then Colossians. So that's where we're at, Colossians. And Colossians, that will relate a lot like to the, the book of Ephesians, and then also Philemon because he deals with the person who was a slave, and then P Paul in Philemon is writing to his master, uh, saying, look, uh, anything that he owes you, take it out on my account, uh, but count him a brother, because you know we all come together as one in Christ. So anyway, that's a, a good book, very short. Uh, but let's go to Colossians. Uh, let's see. Jeez, I've already got six minutes down. Oh, we better get, get going. All right. I know you'll like it because it's the Word of God. Uh, 
All right, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be unto you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Well, that's great. They're always praying since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus. So what was their faith in? Their faith was in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints. So, yeah, uh, talking about God, you're always talking about love also because uh, God is love and we're called together. See, there is no division. Now, there's, you know, people are all different and they have, um, oh, I forget what, 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 what would you call it where people kind of groupings of people but in God there's really one family because uh, he only made one race a man and then um, man has moved out and multiplied and they have certain cultures uh, but we should all be walking in love because we're made in the image of God and uh, of course um, the world is under Satan so they follow Satan but God came so people could be set free all right so love for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. All right, this hope, Jesus Christ, they were looking toward the Christ who was coming, the good shepherd, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you. So this hope is come as it is in all the world and bringeth forth fruit. So you notice this, there's a contrast between those things of the world where the world is shaken. The kingdom of God stands unshaken, but the things of this world, they will be shaken, so the only thing that's left is the kingdom of God. Now, the kingdom of God is in spirit, and uh, those that are in spirit in the Lord, we also have bodies, and we live here in the, like in a wilderness. Just like Abraham was living in tents uh, in the wilderness, but he was looking forward to that kingdom God was building, and he rested in that hope. And we rest in Christ Jesus, right? All right. So this fourth uh, fruit that it brings, as it doth also in you since the day ye heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth. As ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear, dear fellow servant. So he's a fellow servant. See, we're called to be servants. We're serving Christ, who is for you a faithful minister that's a servant, a slave even, of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. Yeah, and we do have to have the Holy Spirit in order to love. Uh, you know, people can, um, they can put their flesh under all kinds of things, but you really need the turning that is on the inside, and they'll be talking about that also. All right. For this cause we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you, they talk about that twice already, and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will. So the, what are they desiring? That they, that they would be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And uh, uh, it says that the be fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord. See, we have a walk in this world to do, should be worthy of the Lord, unto all pleasing, being fruitful, so again it says fruitful, in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Praise God, you're to be going out walking equipped, strengthened with all might according to His glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Wow, isn't that awesome? I mean, you want your children to be patient and continue, right? You don't want them to, I always tell, you know, as I've been around different people, uh, that they could just uh, uh, be angry and sin not. Thanks. All right. Let's see, where are we at? Strengthened with all might according to His glorious power. And do all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us um, meet or come together to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Wow, see, 
that we come together, partakers of an inheritance. You know, coming together, that makes me think of a dream I had last night where I was in a church, like kind of on the edge, but then uh, joined in hands with people in the church. And, you know, it's just like, uh, and they in dancing. So we were all dancing, not everybody in the church, but uh, some were going through the church and we were like all holding hands and dancing uh, united together amidst the church so that was that was uh really neat just uh felt great to be united with others um but not everybody was uh and i guess that's the way it is that's the way the bible kind of explains it we should be and uh we should continue to strive for that but you know how it is all right yeah and saints in light and you know jesus is the light that came into the world the darkness understood him not uh, and we've gone over this kind of stuff many times, that you're a city set on a hill. Not to be like a light stuck under the bed and covered up, but to be out. Uh, because we should be reflecting Him, just like the moon reflects the sun. Um, you know, the light, the moon is not the light. The sun is the light. Um, but that's kind of neat how we kind of have that. Let's see. All right. Now there's only four chapters here. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us or transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. All right, we've been transferred in whom we have redemption through his blood. See, they had to use the blood of a lamb just as a symbology. It was a shadow of things to come, but it wasn't the uh, real. It was only pointing towards what was real. Well, just like we said, the moon to the sun, huh? Even the forgiveness of sins. Wow, praise God we've got the forgiveness of sins. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Wow, see, God had this uh, intent of having this be reborn in Him. And so, yeah, this whole world is going to be reborn and good. Uh, no thorns. Uh, imagine the animals, well, in the beginning, in the Garden of Eden, animals were eating plants, and uh, people were eating the fruits and seeds of those plants. All right. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. All right, isn't that something? By him and for him. And yet men will fight over things. They will fight to put their name on something. Well, you know whose name is on it? Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. The landlord owns all the land. And that's why Jesus said, the meek will inherit the earth. All right, blessed are the meek. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church. That's Ecclesia. That means called out ones. Uh, those in Christ have been called out of the world and into him. Just like Abraham was called, he walked in the wilderness, lived in tents, but he was looking forward to that city made by God. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. See, he died and was risen. We're in him. You know, we put off the old man and we have the new. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross. Well, praise God he made peace. He is the Prince of Peace, the King of Peace. By him to reconcile, so um, called back from alienation. Reconciled is called back from alienation. Uh, it's assembled and united. So he's done that, all things unto himself. By him I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies. I was just thinking of that dream. Another thing about that dream, dancing, uh, I think everybody dancing was dressed in white too. All right. And you, okay. So we were alienated, enemies in your mind, and wicked works by wicked works. See, we used to do wicked works. We were wicked, following the wicked one, following the devil. Devil, Yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in his sight. 
if ye continue in the faith grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was proclaimed to every creature which is under heaven, where I, Paul, am made a minister. Uh, so that's a big if there, if we continue in faith, right? Grounded and settled. Um, and then 23.1, I wonder what that... Uh, 23.1, let me see if I can find that and see what that means. Steadfast, yeah. Settled or steadfast. Yeah, that's super, isn't it? Grounded. Yeah, we should be unshaken. Who now rejoice in my suffering for you and fill up that which is behind, which is lacking of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake which is the church. So Paul was going through a lot of uh, different persecution, but he was doing it to continue to build the body, teach the body, warn the body, uh, and there was others coming against him uh, in many different ways. Wherefore, I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me to, for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery, now you're gonna see mystery uh, several times, well, in, even in this book, but several times throughout a lot of these books, uh, talking about this mystery, um, which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery. So here we see mystery again, among the Gentiles, which is... Christ in you, the hope of glory. So isn't this something, this mystery, how this uh, Spirit of God was coming within those believing Jews and then going to the whole rest of the world. And it is written in the Old Testament that, you know, they would have some, and but then there was going to be the one who never had a husband before is even going to have more offspring. So that's the Gentiles. And then both the believing Jews and the believing Gentiles together. Now, you're only believers if you're believing that Jesus is the Christ and that he's come in the flesh and have turned to follow him faithfully. That's the only way you're a believer. And if you're not, you're anti-Christ. That's what First and Second John says, right? All right. So we got into that mystery among the Gentiles, yeah. Whom we preach or proclaim warning every man. So here we see preaching or proclaiming and warning and teaching every man in all wisdom. So proclaim, warn, and teach that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. That's what it's about. Um, very good. That sounds good. Proclaim what, what is right. Uh, warn about errors and then teach. Uh, same way you uh, work a dog or a horse and you do it in a good way. You're not doing it to be mean. You're doing it to be, uh, be good about it. And that's the way, same way you work with people too, isn't it? All right. Now, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. All right. Chapter two. For well, I like that though. See this, he's laboring and striving towards that and it is working in him mightily. See, do we want it working in us mightily? Well, we got to step out, don't we? Uh, we're not going to uh, have that if we're just watching all the time and not stepping out. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea. All right, starts mentioning Laodicea through these books. And for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love unto all riches of the full assurance and understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God. See, that's the third time I think we've heard the mystery of God. And of the Father and of Christ. In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. See, do you want the wisdom and knowledge of God? How are you going to find it except in Christ? And people, just like I was, I was looking in all the wrong places, uh, not finding anything. Nothing, nothing but foolishness and darkness and emptiness outside of Christ. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you or deceive you with enticing words. See, there are those that will come to deceive you 
with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order. All right, so here we got order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ Jesus. Right order. That's good. I always like that because, you know, working with horses, if you put things in right order, you've just solved more than 90% of the problems with people and horses right there if you put it in proper order. I notice things are so out of order. Uh, and of course, we look at the world. The world is quite out of order. What do you expect? You expect chaos, but uh, yeah, it's even more chaotic now, isn't it? So we keep resting in Christ and, and acting. We're engaged in active. When I mean rest, I mean we're not worrying. We're in Christ and on something that's solid. All right. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him. Rooted. Praise God. When you walk something that's a thin line, you're, you can, uh, like I said, I've taught the little ones, place your foot and be rooted. Be rooted in Christ and you don't have to worry about your balance. Just take one step, root it right down and keep going. So, rooted, built up in Him and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. All right, beware lest any man spoil or take captive. Now, you, you don't want to be taken back captive. Jesus already set you free. Why go back and be captive again? Uh, so, through philosophy and empty deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Isn't that something? Because I see this. I have watched this come into even churches where they come in with different traditions. They come in with Judaizers trying to bring them back into Judaism, and they get caught back up into the old. And man, I, people are so caught up with the physical Israel that's in slavery with her children and instead of being tied to Jesus Christ and the freedom in heavenly Jerusalem by the Spirit. That's where we should be because if you really have the love of, of Jews or Gentiles, anybody, you got to speak the truth in love. You don't want to sit there and then think that you come under that. You're going to have no power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit isn't going to go out with you because you're not going to preach the truth. You got to preach the truth if you want, hello, if you want the truth going with you. So praise God, just uh, keep going after it. For in him dwell all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Wow, we need the fullness of the Godhead bodily so people can hear the truth and be saved. And ye are complete in him. What? Why do you have to go out for somewhere else to be complete? There's nothing there. Stay with Christ, which is the head of all principality and power. See, that's a rule and authority. Man, you have to have the authority of Jesus Christ. Look, he gives you power to rock, walk on serpents and scorpions. I think he was talking about in a spiritual sense there. But I tell you, even Paul, when he was going about the business, when he was bit by a snake, he shook it off and it landed in the fire and he kept going, but the power of God was with him. All right. In whom also ye are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands. Wow, just like a building that's made without hands, you have the circumcision that's not made with hands also. This is a cutting off of the flesh in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. You know, I was when I was reading this again, I don't even, I'm, I've read this, of course, but I just don't remember hearing the circumcision of Christ. But th isn't that good? Uh, this is a spiritual thing that we're able to put off the whole man and throw it off to put on the new man, risen with him. Praise God, circumcision of Christ. That's what we need. Man, wow, the wholeness, that whole, wow, what, oh, so much here, isn't it? We could, man, we could just bathe in this. The fullness of the Godhead bodily. All right, where are we at? 
buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. Amen. You want some special ops? Here it is. The things in the militaries of this world, uh, they'll be forgotten. But you, if you ever get in the military of God, the army of God. Now, there's something about this that's different. The headship that we have in this military is Christ himself. It's not man that's fallible, but you are under Christ himself and through his Holy Spirit. Now, we do have people to help us, one another, as this body is being built up. But, uh, wow, it's just so much better being in him and things that are going to last for eternity. Okay, so anyway, that operation of God who hath raised him from the dead and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he made alive or quickened together with him having forgiven you all trespasses blotting out the handwritings of ordinances that was against us which was contrary to us and took it out of the way nailing it to the cross praise god all of that stuff got nailed to the cross he took it all on himself for us boom laid down dead, sin wiped out for the whole world, Jesus risen up, and you risen up in Him, part of that heavenly Jerusalem, by the Spirit, not still caught in the fleshly one, slave and captive. No, you've been set free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Yeah, who the Son has set free is free indeed. And having spoiled or disarmed principalities and powers. Man, isn't that something? Jesus Christ disarmed the enemy. Wow. Now we got to walk in this. In this disarming he's done. Wow. Isn't that good? Man, you want some special ops. Here it is right here. All right, disarm principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly, a spectacle, triumphing over them in it. Wow, that's awesome. I once had a triumph motorcycle, but there's nothing like the triumph of Jesus Christ. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of any holidays or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. See, that's where you had Judaizers trying to come and bring people back under them. Uh, they weren't doing it for you. They weren't doing it for God. They're doing it for themselves to put you under, which are a shadow of the things to come, but the body is, or the substance is, of Christ. Let no man defraud you, beguile you of your reward. Well, isn't that something? Christ has a reward for you, and you want to be defrauded by men? No, the traditions of man nullify the power of God. Okay. You got a reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. That's what they were doing. Uh, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly or emptily puffed up by his fleshly mind. Yep, that's where they're at. These Judaizers and philosophers, these cults of higher um, knowledge. Yeah, they're nothing but cults. Then they have nothing. They're just puffed up by their fleshly mind and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having or that'd be ligaments having nourishment ministered and knit together increaseth with the increase of God wherefore if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the that's those base things of the world why as though why as though living in the world, are you subject to ordinances? See, Christ set us free from all that. Uh, when they were at the Mount of Transfiguration, Moses was there. And then they, Peter wanted to make a tabernacle. And then, boom, from above, this is my son, hear him. Yeah, and then when they looked up, Moses, uh, they were gone. And then... Jesus was there. Listen to my son. Touch not, taste not, handle not. Which are all to perish with the using. See, all those things are going to perish. After the commandments and doctrines of men. Which things have indeed a show of wisdom in self-imposed worship and humility. And neglecting of the body. 
not in any honor to the satisfying 